climate of this world involves an act of mental control, of disregarding the idiosyncratic claim of each tree and seeing them all as a fraud. So, so, so going high level is essentially a, a, an act of self-control or mental control in that you have to overcome the interference that is created by the unique identity of each of each individual, each, each case. Let me, in the time that I have, describe some mental support of regulatory scope, expansive and contracted. If I have time, I'll get to social support, I hope I do. Social support the society is constructed for expanding and contracting the scope of regulation of the individuals, groups, and organizations, and so on. But our focus on mental support uh, in the beginning of my talk, uh, especially on uh, medium of communication as providing support for expansion and contractual limitation, a little bit related to Rory's work, and also self identity. We'll see how much uh, I'm to squeeze in. So, starting with medium. Pictures are icons. They physically resemble the reference objects. What is symbol? They carry the essence of the whole object. So the claim would be that words, words serve to represent distal and all dimensions of objects, whereas pictures serve to represent more proximal objects, proximal than any of the dimensions I mentioned before. So then the question is, are words processed process more efficiently when they refer to distal objects and picture process more concretely, more, uh, more efficiently when they uh, refer to proximal objects, even though the object is is the same and the exposure to the input is the same. So we did a simple RT style, reaction type study, in which we have distal and proximal object, the same object, presented either by picture or by verbal label. There could be all kinds of objects, it's not either to say it's this object or that object, presented either in, in, in picture one. We had all kinds of distances, or just exemplified with one distance that is spatial distance, and it's the same object, and we use the points of illusion to create a sense of the object being uh, proximate, being close spatially or distant spatially. So in this case, it's a bird represented by the word behind the bird or the picture of the bird. With the other things, I'll be to say it's a, it's a bird or a pair or, 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 or make that make those make those choices. Anyway, I'll, I'll define that represents what uh, what we we found with other distances is that yes, for picture you are faster when they are proximate. In the, in, the, in, the, in the converging lines there at the base, then where they are at the top, and there seems to be spatial distance. But for words, it's the opposite. You are actually faster when the word, when the word appears in history, uh, spatial distance, or when you go from here. And again, we found that with objects that refer to the recent past versus the distant past, again, for the recent past, pictures were better. For the distant past, words were better. For the near future, it's, it's ever. It seems that the mind prepares symbol symbolic unmolded, disembodied representation when it is going to interact with something that is distant, and more pictorial, vivid, embodied, analog representation when it prepares to interact with something that is real, is the proximal on any, any, of, any of the dimension. Yeah, so picture a better process with near and words are better process when far, not the words themselves necessarily, the, the, the object they refer to. So, in terms of expansion, that's something that may relate to the shared reality session, very interesting shared reality session we had yesterday. Maybe picture or thinking Victoria, representing Victoria to Victoria supports contractive communication, communication with those that are near me, that are with me, that are like me, that are also my clones, that I get, that make ready visual representation. And maybe words support representation of more distant people, more distant in, in time even to things that happen near and that are uh, what they call it, in name of uh, that happen. So we did a simple study uh, in which we tell people would tell them Tell about yourself to another. You can tell another person about what kind of individual, what kind of person you are, what kind of getting acquainted with. And you, you, tell, you tell them in terms of what do you like more. 
And we give them choices, a variety, like a, a, a few dozen choices, like a banana, I'm a banana, like, I like bananas, I like apples. In one condition, the objects in which they, that we chose were represented pictorially, and in another condition, they were the same objects were represented uh, in words. And then we give them a choice. To whom do you want to communicate? They have the choice to want to communicate with somebody near. It was not like NYU, here in New York, in Manhattan. Somebody here in Manhattan, Mary in Manhattan, or and in, in, in Florida. Yes, so they have to, to, to choose who they want to communicate, to whom they want to communicate the likes of this things. And as, as, as predicted indeed, when I conveyed in pictorially my likes, I prefer to convey them tended to prefer to convey them to proximal people, people around me, and have a nice like me. But when I conveyed my purpose in terms of uh, more symbolic, in terms of what I prefer to convey to the uh, to personal people who are not like me, not here, to uh, Miami, who knows what's So, just a uh, tell you some fun can study. We talk, ask people to choose a restaurant sign for, for a, a sign and so a restroom sign for a restaurant that will open either next week or next year. The sign was, the, the sign was either the picture of a man uh, and a woman or the words man, man and woman. And the question is which type of representation do you prefer, a visual sign or a symbolic uh, word sign. What we found again, similar to the results before, is that the visual sign was mostly preferred for the proximal, maybe for the next week, uh, whereas the, the word sign, the symbolic sign, was preferred to represent the restaurant and the restaurant that will open, will open in Europe. So pictures are concrete and embodied medium that may support contractual communication and the claim is that what are more abstract, they were designed and humans have developed long with language in order to expand the scope of communication of it. I don't have to show the other person exactly how to use the flint or draw a picture of the flint. I can, to make fire, I say it in a way that would travel different spatial distances, ethnic differences, etc. Et so that I'm not stuck with the representation that is relevant to me here and now, that is invariant and can be used in a variety of contexts. That would be the purpose of developing more uh, abstract uh, uh, representation through the greater diversity of people within my uh, scope. Remaining within language, the question that do come in within language, can of course distinguish the degree of abstractness. So again, this question is how broadly, what is the scope of my, if you want, broadcast? How when I communicate to one person versus I try to reach more people and by more it would be a more diverse, divert, um, diverse range of, of, of people do. Does language adjust the same message? Does it adjust in abstractness as a function of who, who is not with this moment or the or, or, or And share with, with her colleague Priyanka Joshi is a very nice study in which people describe the audience wasn't there, so it's not an issue. They were scared or not scared or aroused or not aroused. They wrote a, a, a description of a day to live their life. They had like a variety of experiments that described one simple one. And they were told that it would be read by one person or would be read by 50 and so on in various times. This is basically defined. When there's a one person audience, the message is framed, the same message is framed more completely. They assess the abstractness of the uh, of the message, but we will not go into that, I can do it later. But when they address the broader audience, the language became more, more abstract. What we, we, we would claim that the concrete uh, language supports contractive communication. The work that has been done in your lab suggests that informal <coughs> communication is used for people that are like me, for people who are, I'm going to see soon, to people who are around here people that are in reality and it's more formal language, which tends to be more concrete. More polite language is being used to communicate. And we don't have any other information about the person except that he's not here. You'll see him later, maybe you'll see him, and so on and so forth. You see, so the more you distance 
that the, the recipient, the more likely you are use, you're likely to use polite language, which the work from the labs shows this tends to be more abstract. Politeness is abstractness. Abstractness is to be able to make a connection with people that are not yourself or clones of yourself. Coming to, to humans and animal learn that meditation is lower. As long as an Albert Mandura is not, uh, is, is not worth all kind of books for some reason. As I said, modeling and so on has not been studied in social psychology. So it's always the, you know, overtake it by people from different disciplines. But the question is what do we imitate? What do we imitate? For example, do we monkey imitate or do we human imitate? Do we imitate the low level or the higher? We have the same thing that we are asked to, to imitate. Does the imitation become less literal when the target of imitation is friendly or is friendly? It's more difficult. Than, than. So Jochen Hansen did it in my lab a couple of years ago. And now it's a series of studies that describe one of the simplest we call the Tao Dog experiments. We show subject the three minutes of a model preparing the towel dog from hips of towels that, that are arranged in some way and that have different color, yellow, red, blue, and she takes a towel and makes one this this and this and that towel and you see that she does all kinds of minutes, three minutes, okay, you've seen it, now it's, no. now you, and we looked, all right, we have mentioned with a simple one, I look up here, how exact is the imitation? We would like go from this blue here and this blue towels here, but the model went left rather than the right, which is interchangeable. Do they literally imitate the technical model? They left, I do left, which is, should be um, an irrelevant over imitation, sometimes called a literature, more like a means imitation rather than end imitation. But all we looked initially is the exactness of imitation, sorry, the, and by coders who were unaware of where the video came from. So in one case, the, 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 so from the cross studies, the video was made either next door in, a, in the lab, or it was made in another building. That's all. But you see the same video. It was made uh, in, the, in just a short while ago, or it was made long ago. You see the same video. And so we vary the variety of businesses. And this is a, a representative result. People are simply, in terms of percentage of uh, movement imitated, they are more literal in imitation when the same video is framed as being done, as being uh, performed here, then, then, then there. So people prefer more schematic, more ends related representations and action plans that allow, that maintain the environment, towel dog, getting to a towel dog, but allow improvisation. Ooh. So low level limitation of fault learning from proximal model, high level limitation of fault learning from distant model. Mm. Okay, so let me try to say a word about social hierarchies. What well, about social support? It's, we are not left alone. We are not home alone, and there is culture in this society that may have evolved structures and procedures to support contractive and expensive. Uh, population. Social hierarchy and social norms are, exam are examples, but let me say a word about social hierarchy. I'm not sure I'll get, be able to get to the experiment. So, so, so the claim would be that social hierarchies uh, have evolved a social support for expanding and contractive regulatory scope. And, and the question would be like this. And hierarchy is not fixed. It can change from one situation to the to the other. But is it possible that when you occupy a higher level position in a hierarchy, that enables you in some, in some way to think more expansively? And if you occupy a lower position in the hierarchy, by the nature of your task or by the nature of the expectation for you, focus on more specific and that affords zooming in into particulars 
and, and processing it uh, more concretely. Uh, so that was uh, the claim. We did a study, I'm not going to the time to describe it, where you had where you had a grid and you, can, you enter, you enter at some you enter a point in the grid, it's like the lower best of the choice the least. Uh, you enter here and there's a local map and then you can move only one back one square at a time and you get points by moving and you have to get the, the largest number of points. There's a local maximum which is up there, but there's a global maximum that is far away. The question is whether they'll reach out fast or can they, they will reach the global, the global maximum, which requires you to kind of transcend the local maximum, which people often get stuck in. And the finding is, and people uh, perform them as team leaders and as, 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 as followers, as team members. And, and the finding is that it took you less time to, to get to the global maximum when you're a team leader than when you're a follower. And the total number of points was higher when you are a team leader than, than a team member. I'm presenting it, but it's kind of metaphorical of when you are a high level position, you need to expand your scope. You need to be, as Coco was saying, the gatekeeper. You need to interface the group with other group. You need to integrate the subtask that may be done at the lower level that affords and that's a support for expanding for for expanding your scope and the problem is obviously that it spills over you hide the hierarchy at some in some dimensional some task and then you go to the restaurant and you expect to get the best seat there and that, that's irrelevant that because the mind is at this catch up and it, it doesn't distinguish well between social hierarchies that's a problem that can be seen as collateral damage of, of social hierarchies. The basic function is it affording, when you are empowered, to occupy how to open your vista, and when uh, you are at the lower level in the hierarchy, to zoom in. And in some way, those that are put in higher position are kicked up. They cannot enjoy the specifics of working on something, and they have to be like, like more, more abstract, which is not always fun. So uh, that's what I just said. And yes, human environmental social supports for contract and expensive regulation. I'm very interested in the social support, and I'm working with uh, Michael, who is not here uh, on that. It was yesterday. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so uh, this is the story complete. Uh, controller for malleable immersion in the present, where it's abstract representation afford more. We mentioned it, uh, somebody mentioned it, uh, afford more stable regulation, having more key that is oriented towards ends that are not here, not now, not me, and not necessarily in reality. It's an unhappy ending, but I'm not saying to save, to save Thank you. Thank you.